Hello, my name is Matt Puckett. This is Critical Thinking Short Video number three. In chapter 10 of his book, author J.P. Moreland um, discusses some, discusses his philosophy on what the church needs to do in order to make it more conducive to developing the spiritual mind of the congregation, and he lays out several practical, um, practical things to do. Basically, his idea is that the church needs to take a very proactive approach in developing the mind of the congregation. He used the, his own example, uh, the example of his own church, and laid out his belief that, on the one hand, senior pastors need to be done away with. Rather than have a single pastor over all aspects of the church, there needs to be many different pastors, or as he described them, elders, the biblical term, that rotate control of the church. Well, not control, but they rotate the duties of the church, and they are more focused on training and equipping the congregation to in discipleship. Moreland believed that it is dangerous to let one individual have so much power and that if a church is not careful, it can end up making that individual's personality or character traits the foundation at its core. He also believed that the church needs to put a greater emphasis on the teachings that are offered by Sunday school curriculum. Um, he, at his church, him and his elders had many different opportunities and classes that different groups could take if they were so interested that covered a variety of topics such as the Bible and politics or the Bible and science. Um, he wants a greater emphasis placed on the church library to not just, as he described it, be a room tucked away in some corner, but to be a visible, active part of the church and to encourage people to read the books that are offered there, not just to offer feel-good self-help books or whatever is the number one bestseller in the Christian book world, but things that cover a variety of topics. Um, finally, he believes that... Um, in addition to not having a senior pastor, that pastors need to rotate who teaches um, so that you don't have one individual who is doing 52 sermons a week, but rather you have individuals who can have a period of weeks or months to come to put greater emphasis and thought into their sermons and not necessarily feel like they have to get a sermon finished before next week. After reading this chapter, I agree with several of his principles, and I disagree with one in particular, and that is his thoughts on senior pastors. Um, I did not particularly agree with his interpretation that merely since there is no mention of a senior pastor in the Bible, that it is not something that man just came up with on its own. I do understand that in some situations a pastor can take on more of a cult of personality kind of role and can inadvertently be the very foundation of that church. And people rather come to hear a dynamic message from this pastor rather than come for the sake of hearing the word. Um, I do not agree with his belief that there needs to be a plurality of elders I think there is something to be said for order and to have authority. Um, my church has several different, has a senior pastor, but it also has several other pastors under that pastor, but who assist in different roles. Um, I do agree with that you don't need to have the same pastor speaking 52 times a year, and my church and several others do a good job of rotating the youth pastor, the executive pastor in at different times. Secondly, um, I agree with the Sunday school curriculum thing. I think that greater emphasis does need to be placed on um, covering a wide variety of topics, not just going into Sunday school and doing the generic, let's study a passage or let's study um, 
you know, this popular Bible study. I think that I especially liked his idea that there needs to be multiple classes offered. I think that it would be a great idea. Um, well, an example of this would be the Passion Youth Conferences that I went to uh, many years ago when I was a high schooler and in my first go around at college. In between the main messages that you had with um, the speakers such as Louis Giglio and Andy Stanley, um, you would have what was called breakout sessions where you could pick between a variety of topics and choose to go participate in that for the conference, such as discovering your calling in life, engaging a lost culture, topics such as what what the Bible has to say about social justice and you know, even potentially what does the Bible say about the environment. I think that is a great goal for churches to aspire to, to just have a greater emphasis and a wider variety on topics that don't merely, that um, do a good job showing that the Bible does have many things to say about a wide variety of practical topics. Um, going back to the fact that Moreland based a lot of this on his church, the second thing that I was un that I did not agree with him about is I feel that many of his ideas were not necessarily practical um, for the very reason that when he was describing his church, he was obviously talking about a large church with the access to many resources and potentially a very well financially off, um, that they were able to offer as many services was a great thing, but I believe that the majority of churches just are not in a position where they can have as many offerings and access to as many resources as his did. Um, the majority of churches are small churches that potentially have less than 100 members, some even less than 50. And in many times, they can't even afford to pay their pastor a salary, and so he's having to work a full-time job during the week to make ends meet. I do not think that his one-size-fits-all would work necessarily for all churches. For a church of 35 to 40 people who can't afford to pay their pastor, they're not going to be able to bring on multiple elders. They are most likely going to be limited in terms of the curriculum that they can offer, um, sort of the training that they can offer. And also, um, I think that... I, ju I just do not necessarily agree with that. I think that, and to be fair, Moreland even himself said that these are just his starting points and that it's not going to apply to every single church. But I do agree ultimately with his ultimate point that the church needs to place a greater emphasis on intellectual development, whether it's a small church or a mega church. They need to take advantage of what they can to help develop thoughtful curriculum, um, projects, Bible studies, sermons that can assist their congregation in thinking about things that they normally haven't, such as what the Bible has to say about practical matters.